Welcome back to our discussion about the pivotal events that led to the Civil War. In the last lecture, you learned about the failed Missouri Compromise and Compromise of 1850, the inflammatory anti-slavery novel Uncle Tom's Cabin, and the uproar and violence surrounding the Kansas-Nebraska Act. Next on the list was one of the worst Supreme Court decisions in American history, the Dred Scott decision. Dred Scott was a slave from Missouri who was brought to the free state of Illinois by his owner. Because he was brought to a state that did not allow slavery, Dred Scott sued for his freedom and the case went all the way to the Supreme Court. The result of this case would have important ramifications on the issue of whether or not slavery could spread. In 1857, Supreme Court Chief Justice Roger Taney delivered the court's decision and it was not a favorable one for Dred Scott or any other slaves. First, the court determined that since Dred Scott was not white, he was also not a citizen, thus establishing that no African Americans, free or slave, were citizens and therefore were not protected by the Constitution. Secondly, Taney wrote that Dred Scott, a slave, was his owner's property, and the Fifth Amendment of the Constitution protects a citizen's right to their property. In essence, what this decision said was that slavery was considered a constitutional right that the federal government could not take away. This meant that now slavery was technically legal throughout the whole United States. This decision outraged abolitionists throughout the country and caused further division between the North and the South. One of those abolitionists who was outraged by the Dred Scott decision was a man named John Brown. John Brown was a pretty extreme abolitionist. In fact, you could say that he was a bit radical. He was in Kansas during the violence of Bleeding Kansas, and it is believed that he and his sons were responsible for a few murders there. And in 1859, he took the abolitionist cause to the South. Brown and several followers raided and captured the federal arsenal in Harper's Ferry, Virginia. He hoped to incite a slave revolt in the region. Brown and his followers were captured by federal troops and his raid was unsuccessful. Since Brown technically took up arms against the federal government, he was executed for treason. However, it wasn't so much what Brown did, but rather the reaction to his execution in the North that angered and frightened Southerners. Southerners, of course, thought Brown got exactly what he deserved, but many in the North viewed Brown as a martyr, someone who died for a righteous cause. As Southerners read Northern headlines that hailed John Brown as a hero, their trust of Northerners eroded even further. The straw that broke the camel's back was the presidential election of 1860. During this election, the extension of slavery into Western territories was the major issue. In the years prior to the election, a new political party called the Free Soil Party emerged. Like their name would suggest, the Free Soilers were opposed to the spread of slavery. Members of the Free Soil Party eventually formed the new Republican Party, which also opposed the spread of slavery. In 1860, they chose as their presidential candidate, Abraham Lincoln. The election of 1860 was between four candidates. The slavery issue split up the Democratic Party into Northern and Southern factions. Stephen Douglas ran for the Democratic Party, while John Breckinridge ran for the new Southern Democratic Party. Also throwing his hat into the ring was John Bell, who ran for the new Constitutional Union Party. Abraham Lincoln won the election, despite not receiving any electoral votes in the South. After the election, Southerners saw the writing on the wall regarding the future of slavery. State governments throughout the South began holding secession conventions, and South Carolina was the first to secede, followed by 10 other Southern states. They declared themselves a new country, the Confederate States of America, and chose Jefferson Davis as their president. After the secession of South Carolina, Abraham Lincoln decided to resupply the federal port in Charleston Harbor in South Carolina, rather than surrender it to the Confederates. On April 12, 1861, Confederate forces bombarded the fort, and the Civil War had begun.